Well, we are in our seventh week on our journey through the history of the church as recorded in the book of Acts. And every week has actually been building on the week before. But this particular week, and maybe more than any other, is the result of everything that has happened previously. And it's really important to understand. So let me take a quick moment to make sure we're all on the same page. If you go back to the very beginning and chapter 1 of the book of Acts and verse 8, Jesus gave the mission to his disciples by saying, you will be my witnesses. In other words, just simply talk about what you've seen and heard and experienced. And you will be my witnesses first here in Jerusalem and then expanding into the regions of Judea and Samaria and ultimately taking this message around the entire world. And I'm guessing that this small group of followers who had likely never traveled outside of their local area had no idea on how that was actually going to happen. And then we saw the day that the church was born and people were excited and they were joining and they're being baptized and praying and fellowshipping together and the church grew rapidly. We saw opposition then come from people on the outside, and we saw a threat rise from people on the inside. And yet the church continued to grow and grow rapidly. It's a large church, and last week, because it was growing large, it faced an organizational challenge. And so the leader said, let's choose some people to lead and serve in the church. Now, two of those guys who were selected were Stephen and Philip. Now, you read in chapter 7 that Stephen, because of his faith and connection to the church, and specifically Jesus, ends up being murdered. And two things in particular happened as a result of that. One, people who were against the church, and more specifically trying to stamp out the message of Jesus, actually gained more and more confidence to try to eliminate the church and the followers. Which leads to the second thing that happened as a result of that. It tells us in chapter 8 that people started to scatter, right? The people who were a part of a church started to run for their lives. People left Jerusalem and moved to other areas. And Philip is one of those guys, and he goes to the area of Samaria. And he just simply continues to do what Jesus asked them to do. He talks about what he has seen and heard and experienced, An amazing thing happens in this new region. The people in Samaria actually responded to that, and a whole new group of people started to follow Jesus. Now, I just think of all those preceding details, and they're really important to know and keep in mind on how he ended up where he is. Or as I would say it, he's going to be in the right place at the right time. Now, the interesting thing to me about this is maybe just about the time that Philip starts to believe that God could have orchestrated all of this for the greater good, God asks him to leave behind the really great and exciting thing, the fruitful thing, and go to one single individual on a deserted desert highway. And that's really our story for this week. And you're going to read it together, and you're going to discuss it, And I'll just say this much, that Philip's going to meet a eunuch. And a eunuch who comes with a lot of baggage, maybe some likely barriers, and a ton of questions. But in the moment, he is seeking God, right? The moment where he's trying to understand, but not grasping it. Literally reading his Old Testament scriptures, searching for answers, Philip comes along. I'm going to leave the story hanging there and not go into a lot of detail. You're going to read it and figure it out. But I really want to challenge you to put the focus on one of two areas. This is what I did in the message as well. To either truly identify with the eunuch as someone who feels on the outside, maybe a little forgotten, maybe intentionally pushed to the perimeter. The true gospel message is that Jesus loves you and includes you, and if you were to grasp it, could radically change your life right now. Or you would choose to identify with Philip, right? specifically to start to believe and to act as if wherever you go, that God has sent you there, and that God wants to work through you to impact the lives of those around you. Because, and don't forget, that is how the message still spreads 
and what makes the church truly unstoppable.